Hey guys, here's a Blender tutorial for hard surface modeling. I posted this image here and some of you asked me to create a tutorial. We are going to create a similar one, this guy here. And my idea was that we start with this simple mesh as a base and upload the project to my Patreon so that you can download it and we can start together and you can follow along. The link is added to the description below. Ok, having that said, let's start. I also use my free JMesh Tools add-on that has a bevel button. With that you can easily add a bevel and a weighted normal modifier to a mesh. Ok, the first thing that I want to do is to add this inner circular metal plate. To do this I go to face selection, select this face and press Shift and D to duplicate it. Then I press G followed by Z to move it upwards along the Z axis like that and then I press S to scale it up a bit. Looks nice but I want to have it as a separate object so I press P and choose Selection. Ok, now it is a separate object but it has the bevel and the weighted normal modifier added because we duplicated it from the first mesh. And that's ok, I want these modifiers to be there so everything's fine. I switch from material preview to the solid mode because it's faster and we don't need to see the materials when we are modeling and also select random so that we get random colors for separate objects. This makes it easy to see which is which. Ok, now it's time to add this kind of beveled ring. So go to edit mode and press I to add an inset. Just bring it to the inside like that. Then we need another one, again I press I. And then I want to have another edge loop in between, so I press Shift and R, left click two times and here we have it. Nice, now with this selected I press G followed by Z and move it up like that and then I press Ctrl and the B key to add a bevel. You can move the mouse wheel slightly to add more segments to make the bevel round. Ok, looks good. But the plate is a bit too thin. So go to the modifiers panel and add a solidify modifier. It is added now below the bevel modifier, which also looks interesting but I want it to be flat, so I drag it to the top of the layer stack. I set it to 20mm and even thickness. Or perhaps even a bit more. 30 yeah, I'm happy with that, so we can also apply the solidify. Alright, now it's time for the first boolean cut. And what we need for that is a cutter, so we have to, yeah, create one. Which is simple, we just go ahead and duplicate again the inner face. Then I scale it down in edit mode. And then I switch to the vertex selection. Because then I can select the opposing vertices and press J to join. Also for these ones. Great, and then I can go to face selection, select these faces and delete them. Ok, now we end up with this guy here, I press P again to turn it into a separate object. Select it, move it a bit upwards by pressing G followed by Z and then back to edit mode press A to select it and E to extrude it downwards. Alright, I need a gap between the cutters, so I go to edit mode, select it and press S to scale it down and we can do that because the pivot point is at the center. Great, and the only thing we have to do now is to add a mirror modifier for the X and the Y axis. Ok, we don't need the bevel and the weighted normal, we can remove it. And for the mirror modifier, I enable the Y axis as well. Alright, and here we have the cutter. For that, the mirror modifier can be applied. Ok, now how to cut a boolean difference? Well, this is where JMesh Tools comes into play. For the target, I select the metal plate that we created, select it and press this button, then select the cutter and press the button Difference. That's it, looks nice. Now I go to the 
Material Preview again. And for the object I choose a Steel Material. That is basically just a principal shader with a white color, low roughness and a high value for the metallic. Isn't that simple? Now I bring this a bit to the inside. Again I press G followed by Z. And what I did after that is to add a cylinder with an emissive material to the inside. Just press Shift and A to add a cylinder. Go to Edit Mode and scale it down. Well, see, the 3D cursor hasn't been at the center, so the object is a bit off. No problem, we go to the Item tab and set the location to zero. Scale and move it to the inside, so that it is below the plate. And then I assign a material that has an emissive shader. Of course you can change the size and the color if you like. And this is really glowing because you see here in the render tab that we have the bloom effect enabled. For this effect you can for instance modify the radius or the intensity. Ok, next step, how about cutting some holes into the mesh and then add some metal curves. You know what, I just have to cut one hole. I will tell you why in a moment and I want to cut it here into this face. I press Ctrl, Shift and P to enter the primitive mode of the JMesh Tools add-on. The primitive type are set to circle and the operation to difference. Now press Ctrl, left click to start drawing a circle. And then I Ctrl, left click onto the white square of the gizmo. The effect is that the circle is perfectly centered to the underlying face. Then I press E to extrude and Ctrl left click to cut into the mesh. And here we have it, a nice hole in the mesh and the bevel modifier is still active and taken into account. Ok, great, and the only thing we have to do now is to symmetrize to have the hole on all sides. So first I press the button minus X. You see this here in the gizmo, we have to bring it to the negative X side and after that to the positive Y axis. That's it, but yes, we also could have used the mirror option of the primitive mode. Anyway, what matters is the result and there are many ways to reach it. Alright, now let's go ahead and add the metal curves. For this I'm using an add-on that comes with Blender, you see this here in the preferences, that is called Extra Objects. I use it to add a single vertex there are other ways to do it, but it's easier using the add-on. Ok, but first I have to select the face where I want to add the vertex. So go to face selection and select it, this one here, and then again I use JMesh tools and press this button to set the 3D cursor to the active face. Because now when I press Shift and A to add the single vertex, it will be added exactly at this location. We don't see it at the moment, it is hidden inside the object and it's just a single vertex, so I select it here in the outliner. Be sure to be in edit mode and then select vertex selection. Ok, then I press E followed by Z to extrude it upwards along the Z axis. And now we see it coming out of the object. And I press E to extrude again and this time I constrain to the Y axis, so I press the Y key. I want to have it on the other sides as well, so I add again a mirror modifier for the X and the Y axis. For this I use the mirror button of the JMesh Tools add-on, because this automatically sets the pivot point to the center. Then I also enable the Y axis for the mirror modifier. Clipping is checked as well, so we can press G followed by Y to move the vertex to the middle. Alright, to make the vertex here at the start Round to turn it into a bevel, I press Ctrl, Shift and B and move the mouse wheel to add more segments. Not too many, because otherwise when we add the curve it will look too compressed. That's ok, and then we can apply the mirror. Great, now comes the last step to turn these meshes into curves. For this I press Mesh to Curve, also a feature of JMesh Tools. The curve is a bit too thick, so I go to the Curves panel and decrease the depth 
to let's say 20 millimeters. This looks good, now we can fill the caps and also increase the resolution a bit. And then I go to the material panel and assign a steel material. Alright, and that's it for the modeling part. Now we can bring the point light a bit closer to the mesh. And now we see the nice shadows, which makes it look really pop. And I also like to play around with the different HDRIs. Oh, I like this one. Okay guys, that's it again. I hope you found it interesting. Don't forget to subscribe to JNM if you haven't already and hit that notification bell. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Join the channel as a member or become my patron. And I'll see you guys in the next one.